so welcome back to the part 10 of the environment series and today we will cover the most important wildlife act that is wildlife protection act 1972 so we are trying to cover environment comprehensively till till the prelims come prelim comes so we will be we will be uploading more lectures in this series so this act has been formulated in 1972 and almost 51 year has been completed and this act has been quite successful in protecting several endangered species conserving countries wild diverse wildlife so this has this act has been pro has provided a legal framework for the protection of various wild animals and plants their management management of their habitats regulation and control of trade in wild animals plants and products made from them so this act has several schedules with uh, which provides various degree of protection various degree of protection and their governance governance of national park and wildlife sanctuaries uh, so this act has made our entry to the sites easier because these provisions of this act has made you know our act compatible to the provisions of sites which controls the international trade trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora so earlier jammu kashmir was not part of this act but now after the jn kerry organization act the wildlife protection act has now applicable to J to jnk as well next is what are the constitutional provisions for the wildlife act so wild so constitutionally uh, we have transferred forest and protection of wildlife animals uh, subject from state list to concurrent list by the 42nd amendment act in 1976 under leadership of indira gandhi so now the state government as well as uh, central government can uh, formulate formulate uh, for, can for can enact on this particular subject so article 51 ag talks about uh, you know uh, imposes fundamental duties upon every citizen to protect and improve the natural envir environment including forest and wildlife and there is a article 48a under directive principle of state policy which mandate that every state shall endeavor to protect and improve the environmental need to safeguard the forest and wildlife of the country now come to the schedules under this act there are six schedules previously but now these six schedules are reorganized into four schedules nevertheless the idea behind these six schedules are important hence i am covering this so this six schedules you know gives various varying degree of protection to the different animals uh, based on their importance and uh, their uh, level of you know their level of uh, prevalence so whether the species is endangered extinct or uh, critically endangered so based on that there is various degree varying, varying degree of protection so this endangered species has highest level of protection and a uh, uh, threat to these species uh, in uh, you know invite harshest penalties for violation so species under this schedule are prohibited to uh, for hunting throughout india except under threat to the human life so if there is a threat to the human life you know people can in the self defense kill the animal but after killing the animal the killed animal should be the uh, property of state sole property of state and that was the co previous question in upsc right so remember this so animals such as black duck snow leopard himalayan bear which are asiatic cheetah which are endangered are protected under the wildlife uh, protection act schedule 1 so schedule 2 are also important animals but they have lesser de uh, degree of protection under this act and uh, lesser penalty if if uh, any threat if any threat happen to these animals animals covered under the schedule are assamese macaque himalayan black bear indian cobra and schedule 3rd and 4th this species are not endangered but includes under the protected species uh, which are you know protected from hunting but uh, it can invite penalty for it can for you know like major uh, exploitation hunting so animal protected under, under the sector cheetal baral hyena sambar right 
and scheduled uh, fifth is a species that can be declared under this schedule as a vermin because if this if this is if, the, if these species provide threat to the animal life and destroy plant and food then then this species can be uh, declared as vermin so it can they can be killed or hunted such as fruit bats common crows rats and mice schedule 6 provides regulation in the cultivation of specific plant so for the cultivation of these plants a license is required uh, plants under this schedule are bedomes cycad uh, which is a which is a ayurvedic medicine to cure rheumatoid arthritis then there is a red wanda blue wanda which uh, of which flower is used as eye drops against glaucoma, glaucoma cataract and blindness red wanda is used for uh, uh, in digestion wounds and hepatitis uh, slippery, slippery orchids is basically used as a sedative to treat anxiety in insomnia and nervous tensions so right so in order to cultivate these plants uh, cultivate these plant license is required now come to what are the bodies uh, you know bodies that are constituted under this act this is a national board of wildlife this is a key body apex body for the review of wildlife related matters and uh, approval approval of projects in the around national park and sanctuaries on the same board, there is a state board of wildlife uh, of which chief minister and will be the chairman of the board. Uh, Central Zoo Authority uh, provides recognition to the zoo, zoos as well as also talks with the regulation of zoos across the country. Then there is a National Tiger Conservation Authority which regulates tiger reserves and also uh, give permission to form tiger reserves. Indian Environment Minister is the chair, chairperson of the National Tiger Conservation Authority. Then there is a Wildlife Crime Control Bureau. Uh, this body we have seen in detail in the previous lecture. You can watch that previous lecture. Then protect, uh, there are five types of protected area under this act. Those are Sanctuary, National Park, Conservation Reserves, Community Reserves, Tiger Reserves. Now let us see various important amendments, amendments to this act so wildlife protection act amendment act 1991 this amendment strengthened the penalties and fines for wildlife related offense also introduced provisions for the protection of endangered species amendment act 2002 which introduced concept of community reserve as well as conservative conservation reserves uh, then comes amendment 2006 where we uh, where we provided for the creation of National Tiger Conservation Authority in order to protect tiger reserves, protect and manage the tiger reserves and deal with the issues of human and wildlife conflict. Then the uh, recent amendment has done in uh, year 2022 which which seeks to increase the species protected under the law and implement sites. So the number of schedules now reorganized into four. Schedule 1, Schedule 2, Schedule 3 and Schedule 4. Schedule 1 contain animal species which enjoys highest level of protection. Schedule 2 also contains species which has higher degree of protection but as compared to the schedule 1 they are, they are, there is a less degree of protection schedule 3 protected uh, contains protected plant species and schedule 4 uh, contains species which are regulated under the sites now the under this new act uh, the act permits use of elephants for religious or any other purpose right so what are the initiatives have been taken under this act are project tiger which have we have seen this project tiger in the last lecture please watch this that last lecture uh, second is project elephant which was launched in 1992 to protect and conserve the elephants now total 88 corridors were identified under this act uh, so karnataka has highest number of elephant then comes the assam and then comes the kerala so now look at this the how the tiger sense how the elephant census is conducted so state forest department in india conduct elephant census remember this 
state forest department conducts elephant census again the dna profiling is done by the wildlife institute of india so dna profiling is done by the wildlife institute of india and elephant census as conducted by the state forest department and right so there are two different method in uh, to determine the number of elephants one is block count method and second is uh, dung density method dung density method so these are the two methods uh, through which the ele elephant census is conducted now next is wildlife corridor so these corridor are uh, you know established in order to protect uh, in order to in order to avoid human and wildlife conflict conflict and uh, safe corridor is established for the moment of wildlife so such uh, such there is the corridor near is asolabati wildlife sanctuary which runs from sariska wildlife sanctuary to delhi ridge uh delhi ridge is one such corridor which provides uh, safe passage to the animals such as leopard and other animals now what are the challenges under the wildlife protection act lack of awareness even though lack, uh, the act has been passed 50 years ago uh, there is a less awareness among the people and people less awareness among the people human wildlife conflict second is human wildlife conflict so uh, with rising populations human have encroached upon their habitats forests have been cleared which has led to the human wildlife conflict illegal illegal wildlife trade due to lack of coordination be coordination between different agencies such as customs police forest department there has been increased events of illegal wildlife trade again inadequate penalties which 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 fails to deter such incidents of illegal trade lack of community part participation even though uh, under forest right 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 act 2006 uh, community has been provided right to protect the forest but there is a lack of trust between forest officials and the local communities and this has led to the lack of community participation now the conclusion we need effective enforcement community participation and awareness raising campaigns for effective wildlife protection and their habitat protection so now let us look at once uh, one such uh, question which which was asked in pre uh, in the previous year's exam that a particular plant species is, uh, is uh, placed under the scheduled six of the wildlife protection act what is its implication we have seen that for such plant species a license is required to cultivate that plant and the answer is c let us summarize this article in 2 minutes so we have seen wildlife protection at its objective and then uh, it has enabled us, uh, enabled our entry to the sites then we have seen that now this act is applicable to uh, j and k as well now we have seen the constitutional provisions article 42nd article 48 and article 51 which talks about protecting the wildlife and safeguarding the environment then we have saw the various should schedule and various degree of protection given to the various various animals then there we saw national bodies bodies constituted under the national bodies constituted under this act these are national board for wildlife state board for wildlife central zoo authority tiger conservation authority then wildlife wildlife crime control bureau then there are various amendments done to the done to the act the last amendment is to reorganize various schedule into four schedules and it allows uh, so it so it created schedules f uh, four to include species which are protected under the, under the sites convention then we saw project elephant how the uh, projects uh, elephant uh, census is carried out role of state forest department and the dna profiling done by wildlife institute of india and dung density and block count method to measure the number of elephants so so this is it and this is all thank you for watching this video till the end keep watching i'll be uploading more such videos thank you